Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135 Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boileau and in this unit we revisit project phases using Agile Project Management by mapping Agile work processes to the PMBOK knowledge areas. So we also prepare to complete our first sprint review and planning for our second sprint. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's our agenda for this module. We have a fair amount of material to cover, including an alternate definition of a project phase, a look at the project phase defined by output, project scope change within a phase, project phase gates and formal work products, project management knowledge areas and processes, PMBOK knowledge areas and agile, and next steps. So we begin by providing a definition for project phase in the context of a project development life cycle. In the last module, we said that a project life cycle represents the series of phases or iterations that a project goes through from the start of the project to its completion. There are different types of project development life cycles depending on the type of product to be developed. The work in a project life cycle takes place by breaking the project into phases. A project phase is a collection of logically related project activities that culminates in the completion of one or more deliverables. In Agile, we refer to project phases as project life cycle phases or sprints. The phase in a project life cycle can be described using a variety of attributes. Attributes may be measurable and unique to a specific phase. Examples of attributes include the name. For instance, do we call it project phase A, phase B, phase one, phase two, or the proposal phase, as well as the number. How many phases do we have in a project life cycle? Duration, it, these are time boxed events, typically in the form of a week, a month, or a quarter, as well as resource requirements, having to do with people, buildings, equipment, etc. Projects may be separated into distinct project life cycle phases or sprints defined by the type of output in order to reflect functional as well as non-functional and specialized requirements. These sprints may be named to reflect the type of work done in that phase, representing a specific sprint backlog. Examples of specialized sprint phase names include, but are not limited to, concept development for project profiling, feasibility study for market analysis, customer requirements to identify different user segments, solution development using different delivery technologies, as well as design, prototype, build, field test, transition, commissioning, milestone review, and lessons learned. We alluded to this last week as your team began working on a product backlog by writing user stories for functional as well as non-functional user requirements. Recall that near the end of the chapter in the project management text for the reading assignment in this module, user stories are defined as descriptions of what the user can do and what happens as a result of different actions from a given starting point. Other types of stories to reflect specialized outputs include analysis, development standards, QA documentation, installation, localization, and training. My point here is that you may decide to plan a sprint to address non-functional requirements for the product backlog in addition to functional user requirements just depending on the product as well as the project complexity. Throughout the project development life cycle, there may be a need to change the product backlog in order to adjust for changes in the project scope. This would typically occur during a sprint retrospective using new information received by the product owner. Such changes may result in having new project life cycle phases established or adjusted based on various factors including, but not limited to, management, client, or user needs. The nature of project and life cycle model. For example, is it predictive, iterative, incremental, or agile? Unique characteristics of the organization, industry, or technology. Project elements, including but not limited to, technology, engineering, business, process, or legal requirements. And decision points, such as funding, project no-go points, or milestone review. 
Phase gate reviews are typically held at the end of the project lifecycle phase. In Scrum, we refer to this activity as the sprint review and the product deliverable represented by the gate is referred to as the product increment. Additional reflection on the team interactions and increment occurs within the sprint retrospective. The project's performance and progress for the sprint are reviewed against the sprint backlog and product backlog with updates made to maintain currency of the project and business documents that are including, but not limited to, the project business case. This is the project profile you created in the first sprint, as well as the project charter, project management plan, and benefits management plan, which typically includes the project schedule and or burn down charts to reflect progress made against the product backlog. Recall from our previous discussions that there are five project management process groups identified in the PMI Management Book of Knowledge. These are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. All five process groups are present in each Agile Production Development Lifecycle Phase, or Sprint. In addition, there are 10 knowledge areas in PMBOK representing the 49 competencies that are included in the PMI standard. A knowledge area is a discrete category of project management expertise that is defined by knowledge requirements and described in terms of its component processes, practices, inputs, outputs, tools, and techniques. Whereas the knowledge areas are defined separately in PMBOK, they are fully integrated from a project management perspective and are used in most projects most of the time. Each of the 49 competencies is also modeled in PMBOK as a project management process in terms of inputs, tools, and, and techniques, and outputs. And I provide an example of this for the competency 4.1, which is developed project charter. Project management competencies are also referred to as project management processes. For our purposes in this course, the two terms are synonymous and may be used interchangeably. Generally speaking, the output of one process serves as an input to another process or an increment that is reflected in a product or process backlog. Now, I realize this is a lot of information to take in, which is why I've included the text transcript. For additional context, please refer to Annex A1 an Agile Practice Guide to view all of the project areas and related processes for the PMBOK 6th edition, along with a mapping of each knowledge area to its associated application in an Agile work process. In the remainder of this presentation, I'll provide a short description for each of the PMBOK, PMBOK knowledge areas, along with its mapping to Agile project management practice as it relates to this class. This is also covered in the assigned uh, project management reading uh, for this module, and as I mentioned, in Annex A1 of the Agile Practice Guide. Project management integration includes seven processes and related activities to identify, define, combine, unify, and coordinate the various processes and project management activities within the PMI process groups. In Agile, this is modeled within each sprint project lifecycle phase to build a collaborative decision-making environment and ensure the team has the ability to respond to changes. Project scope management includes six processes required to ensure the project includes all the work required to complete the project successfully. In Agile, we use burn down or burn up charts to manage the product backlog. Agile methods deliberately spend less time on trying to define and agree on scope during the early stages of the project, instead focusing on purposefully building and reviewing incremental prototypes in order to refine the requirements. Project schedule management includes six processes required to manage the timely completion of the project. In Agile, this is a big one, relying on the use of time boxed events in short cycles to create features and other techniques to iteratively refine the features. Project cost management includes four processes used in planning, estimating, budgeting, financing, funding, managing, and controlling costs so the project can be completed within the approved budget. In Agile, this is determined in scope of work. 
scope and schedule are more often adjusted to stay within cost constraints. Project quality management includes three processes for planning, managing, and controlling product quality, incorporating the organization's quality policy to ensure stakeholder expectations are met. In Agile, frequent quality review steps are built into the project using sprint reviews and retrospectives aimed at uncovering inconsistencies and quality issues earlier in the project life cycle when the overall costs of change are lower. Project resource management includes six processes to identify, acquire, and manage the resources needed for successful completion of the project. And Agile, as part of sprint planning, is to ensure necessary resources are available during the sprint and sustained through servant leadership by all members of the team. Collaborative teams are critical to the success of projects with a high degree of variability and rapid change because there is less time for centralized tasking and decision making. Project communications management includes three processes, plan, manage, and control, to ensure timely and appropriate communication of project information. In Agile, this is the purpose and function of the daily scrum. Project environments that are subject to high levels of ambiguity and change have an inherent need to communicate evolving and emerging details more frequently and quickly. Project risk management includes seven processes for conducting risk management, which are planning, identification, analysis, response planning, response implementation, and monitoring risk on a project. In Agile, the use of frequent reviews with each sprint of incremental work products and cross-functional project teams serves to accelerate knowledge sharing and ensures that risk is understood and managed. Project procurement management includes three processes to plan, conduct, and control procurements for products, services, or results needed from outside the team. In Agile, specific sellers or vendors may be used to extend the team. This collaborative relationship can lead to a shared procurement model where both the buyer and the seller share in the risk and rewards associated with the project. And finally, project stakeholder management includes four processes required to identify the people, groups, or organizations that could impact or be impacted by the project to manage expectations and develop strategies to engage stakeholders in project decisions and execution at all levels. In Agile, projects with a high degree of change require active management and participation with project stakeholders. Regular interactions with stakeholders throughout the project helps to mitigate risk, build trust, and support adjustments earlier in the project life cycle, thus reducing costs and increasing the chances for success. We conclude this presentation with next steps. Be sure to work through all parts of the course materials for Module 4, including all content, activities, and assignments. Try to focus on two outputs for this sprint. This would be your ebook proof of concept for the sprint increment and a plan for selection and organization of content for the ebook. Finally, be sure to review all associated readings in the course schedule to prepare for Module 5. This brings us to the end of the presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boyleau, wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I'll see you online.